dash come on and our last two videos we took y'all deep into the Pantanal of Brazil. One time driving through it, the other time riding in the boats on the rivers looking for amazing wildlife. If you missed those videos, you want to back up because they are both incredibly epic wildlife videos. But as we're starting this video, we are leaving the Pantanal. And this is what we have encountered. Our ride out may be a little slow. We definitely have a cow jam. A couple of cows have peeled off. They're trying to escape. They don't want to cross the bridge. With these bridges, honestly, I can't blame them. But the gaucho, which we call cowboys back in the United States, has gone out there to try to round them up. Should I go help him? Kurt thinks he should go help them. Yeah. I'm going to vote a big fat no on that. Now he may have ran them not across the bridge. I think he did. I think he's going to pull them up on the other side. You're going to go that way? That's the way you should go. He knows, Kurt. He knows. They know. He's a boy. Yeah, when he came across the bridge, he looked right up and threw his arm up. He didn't care. This may be our most legit cow jam ever. There we go. <laughs> what happens when you have 230 million cows in a country? And that's a cowgirl. Yes, it is. One of the really most cool things about this place in the Pantanal, of course the cats and all the birds and all the other amazing stuff we've seen, you guys have seen that. But we're about to leave and we run into all these other overlanders. So these guys are from the Netherlands. What are your names? Elmar and Esther. And there's a couple other couples here. And they're from Switzerland and Switzerland. I'll show the van. But in any event, it's always cool to meet other people. They're kind of going to some of the areas we've already been. We're trading stories exactly. and giving We're map learning. points. Yes, we are. So people always ask, how do we find this stuff? We either use iOverlander, the Google, or other overlanders. <laughs> and this is a traveling kid. What's your name? Vicky. Ah, nice to meet you, Vicky. So here's the vans. But any event, we're gonna get out of here. Just had to show you guys, there's all sorts of other overlanders out there yes, traveling. There all right, it's always nice to stumble up on a camp where we get to hang out with other travelers. <laughs> Ciao! Ciao! I like your green hair! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Look at their funny artwork project, guys. Those handprints were made with mud. Always super fun to stumble up on other overlanders, have some socializing time, share some favorite spots along the journey. But now it's time for us to head, he to, the head to the city. Gee, sleepy beauty. He is sleeping beauty. Who's over here? You're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. What are you doing? Hi, pretty pumpkin. Last night, we camped in the city of Cuyaba, which is actually a fairly large city. It's got an impressive skyline. We're going to head to the grocery store today, and then we're going to head up to the town of Caceres. And up that way is a national park. And it's supposed to be a cool little town with a cool little campsite. So let's go get some groceries, make the hour and a half drive up to that area, see what we can get into. We are stocked up on groceries. We were down to bare bones. 
But I gotta say, we are enjoying the Brazilian grocery stores. Don't you agree, Kurt? Yeah, they're, they have good selection of vegetables and produce. They have really good selections of meat. Yes. They have a fairly decent selection of cheeses, but cheeses are pretty expensive. Yeah. You kind of get into some stuff that's actually really expensive, but most stuff overall is not too bad. And, uh, you know, in terms of packaged foods, they have a wide variety. We don't buy a lot of that stuff, but they have some neat stuff that we always like to try, so. Well, and we found a can of black-eyed peas. Black-eyed peas. So we had to buy those. We also did really good on the cat food here, and we found some litter. Hopefully it's good quality. We will find out gonna put this stuff away we need to get some potable water so we have drinking water in the van oh, yeah. and then we're headed to our next camp we're leaving our grocery store which was right there we barely were able to squeeze into the parking area but it worked out now Kurt is going to a very adventurous place next <laughs> uh, he does this from time to time we are headed to a McDonald's. <laughs> he can't stand it when he finds a city that's big enough to have one. This boy right here always needs him a quarter pounder, a double quarter pounder with cheese and some McDonald's fries. So we're going to grab that. That should tell you what kind of city this is. This is a very large city. Lots of modern stuff, but let's just take a look at what we see here. Definitely the biggest skyline we have seen since being in Brazil and uh, maybe since even Lima in Peru. It's a large city, a lot of modern amenities. Uh, it's very industrialized and there's sidewalks and light poles and it's just, it's kind of nice to see some of the comforts of home, which include McDonald's. parked right outside of a mall. Kurt is running to get the food. G is screaming. I think he thinks he's going to get some McDonald's too. But as soon as we get in here, we'll be bolting out of this city and heading about an hour out into the National Park area. But we do need to find water along the way. I know, buddy. You want some McDonald's? There's no kitty cat McDonald's. No, there's not. <laughs> There's the remnants of our McDonald's lunch. And I consider myself an international McDonald's connoisseur. Maybe it's nothing to brag about, but it's true. <laughs> and that quarter pounder was the best we've had, actually, I think ever. You think it was better than the United States? The meat down here is it's so incredible. good. The meat, all the meats we've had here are delicious. So, as they'd say here, it was bomb. Bomb. <laughs> it was good, guys. All right, we've pulled out of the city. We're headed up to our little town in the National Park area to find our new camp. If you're new to the channel, you may not know that before Kurt and I sold everything we owned and moved into a van and started this van life journey, we were both in the civil construction industry and we built big roads and bridges. So it always intrigues us when we come up on a construction zone and we always get a chuckle when they put in a detour that puts us over on a dirt road <laughs> because that would never happen back in the United States. This is actually a pretty advanced construction zone through here. It's just the dirt 
the dirt detour always cracks us up. How much easier would it be to build roads if we could do that back in the States? Yeah, we have to build temporary roads just to move traffic and stuff like that. Definitely cheaper, definitely more cost effective, definitely faster. So. <laughs> But this is actually a pretty nicely done construction zone, so hats off to this construction company. All right, there's your construction nugget for the day. Back to normal Brazil stuff. We're about 45 minutes out of town, and y'all did not see it because it just passed by, but I just saw a sign for anteaters and tapirs. But anyway, we're about 45 minutes out of the city, about 30 minutes from our camp town and we are approaching this beautiful I don't know if it's mountains or ridge or plateaus or definitely higher elevation it's got bright red cliff sides to it and we are headed up not up like in the Andes not 15,000 feet more like 2,500 feet up but we're headed to a bit of a touristy area that's supposed to have a lot a beautiful nature stuff. We left the big city, and to be honest with you, we stopped there and did a few chores. But the one thing about Brazil is it is hot, and down in the city it was hot. Snow found this place right here, which is at about 2,000 feet higher elevation than the city, so it was a touch cooler. There's a lot of waterfalls and nature things around here, to be honest with you. We mostly worked and got caught up on stuff. You may just see my bald head. I got a fresh shave and a haircut. So it was a good spot to get the van cleaned up, to get stuff done. But we gotta go pick up the laundry on our way out of town. And then we are headed to our next destination. Let's go. What are you doing, Manor? It must be moving day. We have pulled out of the little town where we camped and where we did our laundry. And we're gonna confess and tell y'all the big mistake we made with our laundry here in this town. Ever since we've entered Mexico, you drop off your laundry, they weigh it, and you pay by the kilo. And it's always been extremely affordable. <laughs> we got burned, to say the least, this time. Because there was only one place to do laundry in this town and apparently they charge by the piece, by the towel, by the sock, by the shirt, and we had a lot of laundry. Did we just pay $75 for our laundry? $75 for laundry. It was actually six reals, which is like a little over a dollar for a pair of socks. <laughs> so it was literally more expensive to have the socks washed. Than to buy than new cost. ones. <laughs> so, all of our savings since Mexico with cheap laundry just went up in smoke because we paid 75 US dollars to get all this laundry done. But we have clean clothes and they did a nice job. So we're headed down the road. <laughs> We've been telling you guys there's a lot of cows in Brazil. Well right now we're coming through the farmland but this is corn and cotton fields. And these fields are huge. As, I, as far as the eye can see, corn and cotton, giant fields, which is really different than any of the other countries we've seen in Latin America, which were small patchwork quilts of smaller farms, indigenous farms, not this. These are giant farms. We've been driving for a few hours now. We are getting super close to our camp which is good because the sun is starting to set. Nothing fancy about this camp we're headed to, just a place to spend the night, settle in, cook some dinner, get up in the morning and get back on the road. So, we're almost there. Or 
we can go like park over by that tree or something. Kind of out of the way. Way out here. Morning, everyone. It's about 6:30 in the morning. One of the good things about the weather here is it does cool down a little bit at night, so we can get some good sleep, and we did at this truck stop. Truck stop. There are several trucks still here. 6:30. Most of them get up and get out pretty early. Look at that fancy combine right there. Case. Wow. And it looks like there's some more heavy equipment up here. But a lot of the semi trucks that pulled in late last night are out of here. But I want to show you this Brazilian cracker barrel before we get on the road. So we've showed you all the trucks, the big double trailer trucks that are running up and down these roads. A lot of truck traffic in Brazil. And there's a lot of these truck stops, and they're huge. Uh, they call them postos here. But plenty of spots to camp for free, so those are easily, they're usually fairly nice spots. And most of them have some form of restaurant. Now this one's a little bit bigger than most. But it's not necessarily the fanciest to have seen. But I did want to give you just a kind of general look at it. So this one has like little candies and cakes and snacks and barbecue sauces. And I believe this is different kinds of juices and liquors. And then these pots over here, this is very traditional. We see these being sold all over on the side of the road in Brazil and I think they use them to make like uh, rice, beans, anyway several dishes. It's kind of traditional here. Just take a look here see what we can find. Of course can't call it a Brazilian cracker barrel if there's not chickens and there is. All the little trinkets, the wood cut out stuff all right this looks like grilling stuff and I don't know the other stuff is maybe for cattle big wooden stir spoons Ooh, a little bit of toiletry stuff, and then, of course, boots. We are indeed in cattle country, and flip-flops. And Bart Simpson's even in Brazil. All right, so my not-so-healthy breakfast. This is a little uh, thing with carne in it. And this is chicken, and I got a cappuccino. And you can see, here's an empanada. I think you can see that. And that's with carne. I've had those before, they're pretty good. I don't know what these other little pocket things are. And there's some little poofs. And these things are little corn dogs. But in any event, they're pretty typical in all the truck stops. And then they have these cakes as well. And this is sweet. Snow had that last night. It's really good. But anyway, that's the typical truck stop food. And you can see, oh look, they have the um, guacamayas or the macaws statues right here. And we've seen those flying all over the place down here. So super cool. I'm going to enjoy my breakfast. Well, let's try this thing right here. I never had one of these. Hmm. Just what I thought. It's like potato. It's like a potato ball with a little meat inside. How many of you guys? What you doing? Come on. All right, guys. G's getting some grass before our drive today. We got about four and a half hour drive to our next spot. And I see an owl right over there in a fence post. 
I don't have my big camera, so I can't show you any better than this. The main thing is, is G's getting some great outside time. See, he's back as to us, this little owl. I can see his head be bopping around. He's probably gonna fly as we walk up here closer to him. The owl's here. And here comes Snow and Vanna. Awesome. All right, we're gonna come back to this owl because I'm sure he's gonna fly as we get closer. Oh, and there's another one. There's the other one. See, he just popped up there. Now, I came out last night and they're both watching us. They're gonna fly. But I came out last night and they were both right here. So, and oh, they're about to fly. So look close, guys. They're small little tiny owls. Now, see their little heads? are similar to what we saw a few episodes ago. They're just staring at us. I think mostly G. Ah, oh, they're so cool. Can you see them right there? So the one on the left, we can see his belly better. And he's like a light rust color. And the other one is darker, so we probably have a male and female. G's kind of walking. Oh, there they go. He ran them off, that crazy G. But this is their neighborhood, and that's a couple. It's a male and a female. I saw them here last night, so maybe we'll be able to get the big camera. It doesn't, they didn't fly that far away. Maybe we can get the big camera out so I can show you these guys. <laughs> Look at my little banner. Here she comes. What are you guys doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, Bunky? We are on the road, we have four hours to go, and we just went through our very first Brazilian toll booth, and it cost a little over 10 reals, which is about two dollars. And then right after the toll booth was a federal police checkpoint. We have been through many of those, and uh, they do pull people, people over. Luckily, we haven't been stopped at one yet, but there was a lady here that they were totally stripping down her car and checking it out. So let's keep our fingers crossed. We stay lucky on not getting stopped at those. crossing state lines from Mato Grosso, Grosso to Mato Grosso South. <laughs> Getting closer to our camp. And I believe when we were down in the Pantanal, our guide told us that was the river between the two states. So I think that's the river if you take it that way. That we saw the Jaguars the, on? Yeah, where we were on for the Jaguars. Pretty cool. Fun fact, Snow just told you we crossed state border from Mato Grosso to Mato Grosso South. Guess what? No more corn, no more cotton. As far as the eye can see, sugarcane. Big, giant, massive fields of nothing but sugarcane. Nice little bike trail around, along here. We just left the little town. We topped off with gas because it's going to be the last time we hit a town uh, for a while. What's the name of the place we're going to, Snow? Uh, oh. Catus de Aguas? Yeah, something de Agua. This might be a sign for it right here. Which I think Catus is their word for, the Portuguese word for waterfall, I'm not sure. But you can see there, it looks pretty. And uh, it's hot in Brazil, I think we've probably told you that many times. And so we're gonna go cool off in this nice waterfall. So we've made it to this place. Now we've got to go into the reception and see what the dealio is. He's gotta go in and work his magic. We found what we think is a pretty cool camp. So we're settled in, we're all level. 
The van is ready for an overnight stay, and we're gonna go show y'all what's so cool about this camp. We're here on a weekday, so we may have this entire place to ourselves. This restaurant right here seems to specialize in fish, so I think Kurt is pretty bummed out that it's only open on Saturday and Sunday. This place is looking pretty cool. The facilities are set up nice for families, for picnics, for barbecues, for all that stuff. It looks like they have some little cabinas, little cabins up there, and then they have spots for camping as well. There's a lot of signs for day use, so I think people come out here from the town, and I think that's when this place gets really busy. As Snow already mentioned, that is when the restaurants open. But they have this nice little trail down here through the rocks nothing major just a short little trail and down to the water oh, where we can take a plunge Down here by the water, there's a nice sandy spot where we can hop in. And you can see the waterfalls there. And I think we can get just up under that water maybe and get a little massage on our neck. All right, here comes our little Jaguar. Hopping down the bunny trail. <laughs> cool? I don't know, I haven't dipped my foot in yet. What do you think? One little private note about Snow. She loves to play in the water. As much as I love to play in the jungles, <laughs> the water has always... Do a handspring! As much as I love the jungles, she loves to play in the water. And she was telling me already, this place brings back memories of childhood. Now, she used to be a lifeguard at one of the big wildlife or one of the big water parks. So whenever you see her around her get around water where she can just play, she always has a blast. So go snow. Pass by your house at the end of our street, lined with some white and gold things. Making the memory right under my feet with you The taste of your name on my tongue is so sweet The sound of you calling me baby The echoes go on when I go down to sleep It's you and me We've always been we began it's me and you will always be as far as we can see it's you and me
was incredibly fun, cool, and refreshing. But I think it's where we're going to leave you guys. We will see you in a few days for our next adventure. Cheers. Cheers, guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.